Home Assistant Yellow is the Home Assistant Project's first attempt at their own custom smart home hub that puts privacy and local control first. It was announced almost nine months ago, and if you bought one back then, chances are you're going to be receiving your unit very soon. What better time then to take a deep dive into the Home Assistant Yellow and show you everything you need to know to get it up and running, including how to migrate from your old setup to your brand new shiny yellow. The Yellow is their first custom hardware to run the Home Assistant software, which is a powerful privacy and local control focused home automation platform. It's built on a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, has a Zigbee and Thread radio built in with an update to the Matter specification coming later and is available in three different versions. The standard Home Assistant Yellow, which has everything you need, including the Compute Module or two kit variants, either a power over ethernet or a standard power supply kit where you can choose your own compute module depending on your needs. The Yellow was successfully crowdfunded last year and is now beginning to ship to backers any day now. When you open up your Home Assistant Yellow's box, you'll be immediately presented with a welcome card and then underneath is your brand new Yellow and its wonderfully frosted enclosure with the Home Assistant logo front and center on the top. And then depending on which version you ordered, you may or may not have another box to the right hand side, which contains your power supply. Underneath the yellow itself, you may also find some extras like a network cable and heatsink, again depending on which version you ordered. If you bought the standard Home Assistant yellow, then you will have the included power supply and your Raspberry Pi should already be installed inside of the case with the heatsink already pre-installed too, ready to go, and we will open it up and take a look at it in just a second. If you have one of the kit variants, either the power over ethernet or the power supply kit, then we will need to install our own Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, which I will also show you how to do. Let's first take a look at the IO of the yellow as a quick reminder, and then we will open it up for a closer look. On the outside, starting from the left hand side, we have two buttons, a blue and a red one. The blue one does not yet currently do anything, but the red button is for factory resetting, which we will talk about how to use later in case you do run into any troubles. Next, we have the 3.5 millimeter jack, and this allows you to connect an external speaker for audio or music playback, but note it does not support microphones and is a line out only. Then we have two USB 2.0 ports used for an external dongle, such as a Z-Wave or a Bluetooth dongle, or it can also be used for flashing the OS onto as well. USB-C port is next to that, which can be used as a serial monitor to view the Compute Module 4 as it boots up, or it can also be used for OS recovery. Finally, we have the Ethernet port and power jack. If you ordered the PoE kit, then the power will be delivered to the Ethernet port from your network switch, and if you ordered the standard yellow or the power supply kit, then you will be using the barrel jack connector with a 12 volt, two amp power supply. Note that if you have the PoE version, you can connect both the network port and the barrel jack safely at the same time, and only power will be drawn through the barrel jack connector. PCBWay are a one-stop shop for all of your electronic project needs, offering high quality PCB printing services, CNC, 3D printing, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, and everything else you need to make your DIY project become a reality. Check them out with the link in the video description. Let's open up the yellow and take a look at the inside. Underneath are four threaded thumb screws, which act as feet for the bottom of the case, but also secure the top to the bottom. Once removed, you can then pull the base unit away to reveal your brand new Home Assistant Yellow. The first thing you will probably notice when you open it up is either a large black heatsink and underneath is your Compute Module 4 or a large empty space where your Compute Module 4 goes. This is the brains of your Yellow and where we will install Home Assistant onto for powerful local smart home control. Down at the bottom, we have our M.2 slot, which can be used for expandable storage, or depending on the Compute Module 4 you have, is the main storage for the system. Then over on the left-hand bottom corner, we have our Zigbee module. The Zigbee module is already connected and installed, so you don't need to do anything here, but it is nice to know where it is. Let's go ahead and get to actually installing and firing our yellow up. 
If you have the standard Home Assistant Yellow, then your Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4 and your heatsink is already pre-installed so you can skip to the next chapter, unless you really want to see how it goes together in case you need to for the future. If you have one of the kit variants, then grab your Compute Module 4 and locate the black connectors on the underside. These pop into the connectors on the yellow's PCB, so go ahead and line those up using the white outline on the board to orientate it correctly. Don't worry, the board really only fits in one way and you should be able to verify that the holes in each of the four corners of the compute module line up with the holes on the yellow's PCB. Once in the correct position, give it a light to medium pushdown and you will feel it click into place on either side. If you want to remove it for any reason in the future, then a pull under one of the edges is all that's required. Once your Compute Module 4 is installed, we need to prepare and install the heatsink. Grab the heatsink from the box as well as the two spring clips and two thermal pads. Push the spring clips through the top of the heatsink first and then peel off the plastic on the thermal pads and apply them to the CPU and memory modules. The thicker of the two thermal pads goes on the memory module, which is this guy, and the thinner thermal pad goes on our CPU. Then line up the heatsink with the outline and holes on the yellow's PCB and push the clips through the holes until they snap into place. Apply some pressure for 30 seconds to allow the thermal pads to stick properly to the heatsink as well as our compute module 4. Now we can install our optional storage. So there is a few different configurations you could go for here. If you have the standard yellow, then your compute module already has two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of onboard eMMC storage. So you can either install an M.2 NVMe SSD for extra storage, or you can just leave it blank and use the onboard eMMC storage. The extra storage can be used as a data disk, which will store things like music, video or CCTV recordings. If you bought one of the yellow kits and you're using your own compute module, then the same advice applies as above, unless you're using a compute module light, which has no onboard eMMC storage, in which case you must install an SSD into the slot so that we can install Home Assistant. You won't be able to run without an SSD. To install an SSD, locate the single screw on the back side of the yellow's PCB and remove it, making sure to not drop the gold eyelet on the front of the board. Insert this eyelet into the designated space at the end of your SSD, and then insert the SSD into the slot at roughly a 30 degree angle and lower it all the way down into position, and then reinsert the screw into the back of the yellow's PCB, which will secure it. If you have one of the kit variants, we are now ready to install Home Assistant. If you have the standard Home Assistant Yellow, then Home Assistant OS is already pre-installed and you can skip ahead to the first boot section again if you want to. To install Home Assistant, we need a USB stick that we can use to flash our fresh but empty compute module with temporarily. Insert the USB stick to a computer and then we're going to use Raspberry Pi Imager to flash our USB stick. Head over to the link in the description and download either for Windows, Mac OS or Linux and then run the RPI Imager installer. Once installed, click on the Choose OS section and scroll down to the Other Specific Purposes OSs. Then select the Home Assistant and Home Automation menu and then select Home Assistant. Finally, scroll down and select the Home Assistant OS installer for yellow and then click on the Choose Storage button and select your USB stick. Make sure to select the correct one as the USB stick will be erased and all data wiped. Then when you're ready, hit the right button to start flashing and the process will begin. The flash image is very small and only takes a few seconds to complete. Once finished, unplug the USB stick and plug it into one of the USB ports on the Home Assistant Yellow. Next, you're going to want to connect the ethernet cable from your Yellow to your home router. This is important as we need internet connectivity to download the latest version of Home Assistant onto our Compute Module 4. Finally, plug in power to the yellow, and if you're using PoE, then power would already have been supplied when you connected the network cable. When the yellow powers on, the indicator lights will turn solid red and green for 10 to 15 seconds, and then they should change to a slow flashing amber light with a rapidly flashing green light. 
If that happens, then everything is working correctly and the yellow is downloading the latest version of Home Assistant. If the light stays solid red and green, then something has went wrong and you'll need to try the process again, either through power cycling or reflashing the USB stick. Once complete, the green and amber light will go completely off, at which point Home Assistant is now installed. You can now remove the power and the USB stick, and now we are ready for the first boot. We are now ready to fire up the yellow properly for the first time, but first you can reinsert it back into its enclosure if you took things apart. Simply line up the bottom and top pieces of the case together and reinsert the four thumb screws. For the first boot, you're going to want to make sure that again you have Ethernet connected so that it's connected to our local network. Then plug in your power supply into the back and the yellow will boot up. You will see all three indicator lights flashing away too, indicating that power is connected and things are working properly. Give your yellow a few minutes to start up and then head to a web browser and enter http colon slash slash homeassistant.local colon 8123. You should be greeted by the Home Assistant setup page, in which case everything is working. If you don't see this, then you will need to check your router's webpage to find the IP address of your yellow, or you can use a free app like Fing to scan for all of the IP addresses on your network. Then you can enter http colon slash slash, followed by your IP address, and then port 8123 to access the Home Assistant setup page. If this is your first Home Assistant install ever, then welcome to the world of Home Assistant. You are now good to go and complete the short setup process, including entering your name, location, and adding any auto-discovered smart devices you may have on your network. You can then opt in or opt out to analytics, totally up to you, but it does help out the project. And then you will land at your dashboard where you can then get started automating your house with Home Assistant. We have tons of different videos on various different topics to help you get started. I would recommend checking out my beginner's tips video for all of the things to do after you've installed Home Assistant for the very first time. If you're coming from a previous Home Assistant install, let's go ahead and do the migration from your old setup. At the setup page, I would recommend going through and entering some temporary information. I wouldn't spend too much time here as it's going to get overwritten by our backup so just quickly fly through this process. At this point, I did have a whole process written and planned out for doing a Zigbee backup and restore, and this would allow you to migrate your Zigbee devices without repairing them in some, but not all circumstances. And I've done Zigbee backups and restores many times in the past, and it's usually a fairly painless process and it works very well. But for some reason, I couldn't get the restore to take on the yellow and it just times out. So unfortunately, the only way to proceed is to repair your devices with the yellow after setup. Home Assistant Yellow does, however, automatically detect and configure ZHA for you. So Zigbee does work out of the box and you don't have to do anything with regards to Zigbee setup on the yellow. We can, however, go ahead and do the main Home Assistant backup. Log in to your original Home Assistant install and go to Settings, System, and then Backups. In the bottom right hand corner, click create backup and then give your backup a name and then select full backup and hit create backup to start the backup process. It's worth mentioning that if you're using MariaDB for your recorder database, you may want to stop the add-on temporarily before you do the backup so that it will restore without any hitches. The backup process can take a while to complete, upwards of 20 to 30 minutes, depending on your hardware and install size. So be patient and wait for that to complete. Then select the backup that you took and then select download. Save this onto your computer so that we can restore it onto our brand new install. With the backup file safe and downloaded, head over to settings, system, and then hardware. Click the three dots in the top right hand corner and select shut down host. We need to shut down our old install so that the new install can take its place and use its IP address. It's important not to have two devices with the same IP addresses on your network, so that's why we are shutting down the old install for now. Now we are getting really close and we can finally restore our backup. On your new Home Assistant Yellow, head to Settings, System, Backups, and then in the top right hand corner, click Upload Backup and select the full Home Assistant backup file that you took earlier and then let it upload. Then select the uploaded backup from the list 
and hit restore and the restore process will begin. This process can again take quite a long time depending on how big your setup was originally. It wouldn't be uncommon for it to take 30 minutes or more so just be patient for that to finish. When it's complete you should land back at the home assistant login page at which point you should be able to enter the credentials from your original setup and this indicates that the restore process worked correctly. By the way be aware that when you click restore you will lose connection which is normal but remember that you are on HTTP right now and your old install might have had HTTPS enabled. So if you're hitting the refresh button and nothing has happened, remember that you might need to switch to HTTPS to see the login page once again. That's a top tip that catches many people out. Once logged back in, confirm you are seeing all of your integrations from your previous install and everything is as you would expect. The final thing I will suggest is to head over to settings, system, network, IPv4 and then change your IP address to be the same as your previous install. The reason for this is that some integrations may depend on an IP address rather than a host name. So changing the IP address here to take over from your previous install will save you having to go around and fix any of those problems. You can do this with either a static IP address or a DHCP reservation, again depending on how you set up the previous install. Once you have changed the IP address, reboot once again and make sure to change the URL you are using to the updated IP address if need be, log back in and you should now be good to go. Have a quick check of the logs to make sure there are no strange errors that weren't there before and you can now enjoy using your brand new Home Assistant Yellow. By the way, if you plugged in a secondary SSD for even more storage, the way to activate this secondary storage is to go to Settings, System, storage and then select the three dots in the top right hand corner and select move data disk. From the drop down select your NVMe drive and press move. This will move many parts of Home Assistant to the data disk and can take a few minutes to complete. Home Assistant will also restart for that to take effect too so don't remove power while this is happening. You can check the migration was successful by heading to settings, system, storage and then looking at the used space indicator which should be the same size as the SSD that you installed. Nice, now you have some large fast storage to go along with your brand new yellow. The final thing I wanted to quickly show you before we go is recovery. So what do we do if everything goes completely wrong and we can't access our new yellow and you want to factory reset it? It's not as easy as plugging in a display and issuing a few commands since the yellow has no display. I mean, it does, but it's not as straightforward as plugging in a HDMI cable. The way to factory reset the yellow is to remove all power completely and then making sure that your network cable is plugged in, press and hold the red button on the back and then plug in your power supply back in. Continue to hold the red button down for a good 10 seconds or so and then release. After a few minutes, you'll notice the yellow LED doing a double flashing pattern while the green LED blinks rapidly. You should then be able to access the preparing home assistant screen from your browser at which point the yellow is downloading the latest version of home assistant and you should be good to go ready to set up afresh. And there we go that is everything you need to know about getting started with the brand new home assistant yellow. I think we covered absolutely everything we could to get you up and running and all of the basics and hopefully you are ready to get automating with the home assistant yellow. Anyways, that is about going to do it for me. If you enjoyed this video and if you're still watching at this point, hopefully you did, please do me a huge favor and drop a comment down below letting me know if this video helped. And you may as well leave me a like and get subscribed while you're at it. It does help me out a lot. And there we go. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.